Instead, that would fall under collective biological immortality, which we define as... Josh? Is it how an organism survives forever? Uh, like bacteria with a colony? Yeah, by a form of reproduction called binary fission. There is another form of biological immortality that occurs in some individual organisms. For instance, some jellyfish undergo a process of transdifferentiation, whereby they avoid senescence by repurposing their old cells, diluting cellular toxins and consuming them to strengthen the younger cells. This allows for healthy cellular development indefinitely, sans aging. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Next semester, we'll, uh, well, you'll get to it eventually. So, why can't our cells just reproduce forever? Because after several cycles of mitosis, the telomere region of the chromosome reaches the Hayflick limit. Yes, Judy, yes, thank you. Every time our cells make a copy of themselves, the region at the tip of their DNA gets shorter and shorter until it can no longer divide. It becomes senescent, no longer reproduce. Now, some human cells secrete an enzyme called telomerase that helps repair the damaged telomere. These cells are capable of multiplying indefinitely, making them biologically immortal. Now, these types of cells are? Stem cells. Yes. Stem cells and cancer. Thank you. Yes. Sorry, I don't think I caught your name yet. Susan. Thank you, Susan. Cancer. Look. Guys, I appreciate your concern, but I would rather not have the rest of the semester be all gloomy and uncomfortable. Besides, I'm not going anywhere yet. Not until I finish filling your final research papers with red ink. All right, all right, get out of here. Uh, Susan, right? Right. I wrote to you about transferring to the doctorate program here next semester. I attended your symposium on cellular aging at the Molecular and Cell Biology Conference in Houston. You said I could attend one of your classes as long as I let some of the other students answer the questions. Yes, yes, I remember. Do uh, you mind if we walk and talk? I have office hours. Yes, of course. You know, I... I think the approach you've taken with your work on cancer biology is wonderful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Still a lot of work to do before they'll let me publish it. Oh, I'm sure you will. You're a brilliant man. Well, that's true. Wow. You really know your stuff. Where'd you go to undergrad? Oh, my mother was a biologist. I kind of grew up with it. She dedicated her career to studying the Turritopsis nutricula. The immortal Medusa. What's her name? I might have read her. No, she's dead. She never got to publish her research. I'm sorry. It's okay. I've been compiling it. I hope to someday complete it. And of course, someone has let themselves into my office. Anyway, I can see you're a busy man, but I'd appreciate it if you could take a look at my mother's notes. There's some work on transdifferentiation that I think might complement some of your own hypotheses. Sure, I'll take a look. Thank you, Dr. Saigon. I'll stay in touch. Please, call me Michael. Only the undergrads call me doctor. Okay. Thank you, Michael. If you're open for a grave change, breaking into my office is a poor choice. Ah, uh, and you're not a student? Well, I am, in a way. Ah. Giordano Bruno, science's first martyr, burned at the stake for his heretical research. Yes, I know. I was there in a former life. He wasn't that fat. 
I'm Alexander St. Germain. Right. Well, uh, how can I help you, Mr. St. Germain? I'm a writer and an historian. I've heard much about you, Michael. Your story resonates with those of great men before you. I want to make sure it echoes on and on. You want to write about my life? It's not your life that interests me. It's your death. Don't get me wrong, I understand that your scientific work is very promising and important. But the story of a man quite literally consumed by the very thing he studies is timeless and delightful. Well, I'm glad it amuses you. I'm sorry, I don't mean to make light of your disease. It's just that it's difficult for me to be somber about death when I find it so fascinating. Yes? Excuse me, Dr. Saigo. Um, I just had a quick question about bacterial daughter cells for my you paper. You think you could come by later? I'm with somebody right now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, 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 didn't, I didn't know. I'll come back later. Sorry. Hmm. You know, actually, I find your perspective refreshing. Since I told the school, everybody, well, I certainly get enough somber. Michael, if you will allow me, I can make you a considerable amount of money. But more importantly, I can create for you a legacy that can't be erased by death or time itself. Hmm. I will live in this and dwell in scientists' eyes. Son of 55. Shakespeare? Uh, maybe uh, you met him in a previous life. No, I was in Madrid. Cervantes died the exact same day he did. Unfortunate. Right. Well, Mr. St. Germain, it is, uh, I'm truly flattered by your offer, but I don't know that I'm ready to be a, a character in a book. All I ask is that you give the matter some consideration. Let me know when you wish to become immortal. Oh, that's horrible. She bought the boys football player shaped cookies and the girls ballerina cookies. And I told her, I'm not gonna eat your sexist cookies. I threw them out of the trash. Don't you think that was a little harsh? They were pink, Dad. We can't have that. Did you eat already? Yep. Really? What'd you have? Soup. What kind of soup? Soup of the day. There was no soup. You know you're not supposed to take your medicine without eating. I'm not hungry. I don't care. I'm making you a sandwich. You're such a child. Well, your mom will be here soon. Are you packed? I have too much homework. Yeah, you used that one last week. And I think I'm coming down with dysentery. Uh, Jenny, could you please try and give your mom a chance, huh? For me? All right, I'll 
hang out with the dragon lady, but I'm not gonna enjoy it. You shouldn't call her that. You call her a lot worse. Yeah, well, I earned it. I really do hope you two can get along someday. Yeah. That is never gonna happen. And why not? Dad, she's a sexist. <laughs> get my stuff. Hey, sweetie. Hey. Uh, I just need to get my stuff. Okay. Hello, Victoria. How are you, Michael? Doing great. How's your health? You look good. Nope. Still dying. Is she gonna be long? Should I come no, inside? No, no, no. She'll just be a sec. Hey. What happened to your uh, Egyptian goddess tattoo? Oh. We, we decided to have it removed. How is Todd? Uh, he's doing well. Good. Business okay? Yeah, agency's doing great. Really? I thought nobody was buying property in this economy. <laughs> no, Todd is doing really, really well. That's great. He must have some uh, magic recession-proof formula or something. No, seriously, I think it's great that he can continue to provide that economic stability that's so important for you. Don't be an asshole. I'll just yeah. wait in the car. Okay. Um, oh, and hey, it's movie night. You can rent whatever you want. Really? Yeah. Ooh, she will make you pay for that. Hey, since you guys are doing all right, I wanted to talk to you about setting up that college fund for Jenny. Uh, I don't know, Michael. I mean, our kids are just starting elementary school themselves, and there's just a lot of expenses right now. Uh, yeah, I just, I don't want her to have to go to state. She's got too much potential for that. Todd went to state. Look, I'll ask him about moving some things around. I'm not promising anything. I just... How are things on your end? Good. Uh, I, I'm waiting uh, just to hear back from some journals. It's the first step toward a legitimate publishing house. Oh, the first step. Uh, also, I uh, had a writer contact me about a book deal. Could be some good money in that. Not entirely sold on his angle or sanity. Well, hey, we do what we have to do. Hmm. You know, sometimes we have to do something we don't want just to help someone else. I'm not going to have sex with you if that's where you're going with this. Goodbye, Michael. All right. Have fun, ladies. I think it does. Uh, and you have done pieces on comparative studies before. Very rarely. We would have to see some very conclusive test results. We haven't gotten to that phase yet, but the hypothesis is sound and the preliminary data shows... Dr. Zygum, the American Biology Journal does not publish preliminary work. I understand, but this... We would love to hear back from you once your research is further along. Of course. Of course. Um, thank you. Good luck, Doctor. Thank you. You too. Bye.
come in. Michael, welcome. I'm so glad you've decided to fulfill your destiny. It's good to see you too, Count, but I'm um, not sure I'm sold on all that quite yet. Just uh, browsing. Of course, and please, there's no need for titles. Alexander will do. You really a Count? I mean, what's that? Ramen noodles? Aren't Counts supposed to be wealthy? I am, quite. Should you be eating filet mignon? No, I don't eat dead flesh. Right. Nice office you got. This isn't my office. Oh, right. This is uh, one of your many branches where you impress prospective subjects. This is where I live. Where do you sleep? In a field of wild chamomile in Egypt. When I close my eyes, I can feel the cool breeze coming in from the Nile. A memory from one of my favorite lives. You really believe you can remember previous lives? As vividly as you can remember your first kiss. You know, uh, they put people in padded rooms for saying stuff like that. They've become very tolerant. They used to burn us at the stake. The smell lingers for several lives. Yeah. Huh. It's supposed to be me. It's not bad. Very perceptive, Michael. And, uh, these are my previous lives. Yes. We've met before. <laughs> oh, bullshit. I can see it in the eyes. You are the reincarnation of my first subject. But Gilgamesh? He was a Sumerian king who spent all his life searching for immortality. Wait, I, I remember reading this in college. It's uh, the Epic of Gilgamesh, right? Uh, the oldest known piece of fiction. I see you are familiar with my work. He was offered eternal life at the side of the gods themselves. But he rejects them because he doesn't want to abandon the world of the living, right? So he fails in his quest for immortality. To deny the gods for this? <laughs> Very foolish. Yes, but did he fail though? You speak of him still thousands of years later. Ah, uh, okay. Immortalized by your writing because you wrote the oldest book in history. Part of it, yes. Well, why can't I remember my previous lives? Every soul has a purpose. My purpose was to find you again. What for? What's my purpose? What's this? It's your name, Michael. And the title of your book, should you be so willing, of course. When do we start? We already have. My Lord. If we complete this research, the benefits to modern medicine would be groundbreaking. We're talking about immunity to most genetic diseases. Possibly. Including cancer. Thank you. Look, I still don't see the means by which a human can repurpose his cells. Oh, no veggies, please. How do you mean? Well, the medusa can just consume itself internally to get the enzymes it needs. Human cells just don't eat each other. Yeah, I guess us humans need to be fed, right? The nuclei wouldn't, but the enzymes, they might just survive digestion. Yeah, no, I mean, you're absolutely right. As with the antibodies. Which is fine, because they're not going to be incompatible with your own body. <laughs> this is insane. No journal would even touch this. No, this can't go public. 
At least not until after testing. Testing? The department would sooner strip me of tenure than fund this thing. So we don't do it through Walbridge University. We find a volunteer. Who in their right mind is going Excuse to volunteer? Me. Sorry to interrupt Dr. Zygon, but uh, I just had a quick question about genetic survival. Did you get my email? Actually, I've got a question for you. How would you like to volunteer for some cannibalism? I don't know. We're conducting an experiment. I'm wondering if you wouldn't mind if we cut off a piece of your skin and fed it to you. Not much, just an ounce or so. What do you say? Is this for a grade? No, it's not for a grade. Look, I, I will respond to your email, I promise. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Um, sorry, doctor. You joke, but there are people desperate enough that they will try anything. Look, even if we found a subject, there's still a fundamental flaw in your hypothesis. The levels of telomerase in human somatic cells are too low to sustain that the cycle, like in the Medusa. So we use a cell with a higher concentration of the enzyme. Stem cells might have enough, uh, but it will be years before we can effectively harvest them due to the anti-science legislation of the previous administration. Stem cells aren't the only cells that mass produce telomerase. Cancer. Oh, my. Oh, fuck. Michael, you hold the answer within your own body. Whoa. Uh, if you think I'm going to volunteer to... Uh, look, m maybe we can find someone who's willing Without to... the support of the department? Should we post an ad on Craigslist? You said it yourself. It would take forever to find someone. I am not eating my melanoma. So I guess we better start posting. And what if this is actually an effective treatment? What if this leads to a cure? Can you afford to wait that long? I don't know how long I have left but I've come to peace with the fact that I am going to die. All right. You let me know when you've accepted the fact that you're still alive. On the site of the excisional biopsy seems to be healing up pretty well. There may be some cancer cells in the surrounding tissue, but the main tumor is gone. No, actually, I'm more concerned about how you've managed to lose eight pounds since the last time I've seen you. Don't worry. I'll make sure he gets at least 2,000 calories a day. <laughs> Good. So how's your appetite been? Dwindling. Uh, you think maybe you could prescribe a little medicinal THC? <laughs> you know, I don't think the state board would approve that. You may want to try California. What's THC? Uh, you'll find out in college. So you've been exercising? Your overall lung capacity seems a bit low. I've been making him run three times a week, just like you said. Jenny. Actually, you're okay, Jenny. You know, decreased lung capacity is not altogether uncommon at this stage. Well, has there been a stage progression? Well, the results of the pathology show that we are at T2, N3, and M1. So we've progressed into stage three distant due to the dispersion. Does that mean it's getting bigger? Jenny, honey, if you're going to be in here, you can't interrupt Dr. Gibbs, OK? I need to know. I'm the one that's taking care of you. I've had to reassess your prognosis. How much? Well, it's difficult to say at this point. Fine. If you're not going to tell me anything, I'll just wait outside. Jenny. Hey, 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 don't run off too far. It's less than a year. I was hoping the cancer would respond better to the cocktail. We could always increase the dosage, but of course, that's going to mean stronger side effects. In the end, you're going to have to decide whether it's even worth it at all. Michael. She won't even be out of school by then. Hey. Who are you writing? It's called texting. 
Can we talk? I'm listening. Honey, will you please pay attention to me? <sighs> Don't look at me like that, please. You gonna start exercising more? Jenny, it's not that simple. The doctor said your lungs were sick because you weren't exercising enough. He did not say that. I was right there. Jenny. Sometimes there are things you just can't control. I know how hard you're working to help Daddy with his illness, and you can't imagine how much I love you for it. Sometimes, sometimes no matter how badly you want something, it just doesn't happen. Look, I might be getting more and more sick, and I need you to know, no matter what happens, I love you, and it is not your fault. It's not my fault. It's your fault. You're not trying hard enough. I am doing the best I can. This is hard for me, too. I don't care. If you loved me, you would try harder. God, please don't say that. I love you more than anything in this world. Then promise you're going to take all your pills and you're gonna eat well, and you're gonna exercise. You know it's not that simple. I don't care. Just promise. I promise.
you jerk! With those headphones on, you're too easy to sneak up on. What if I'd been a ninja assassin? Then I'd just kick you in the wall. Jenny san, Kung Fu, very strong with you. You win. That's racist, Dad. I know, but it's funny, so that makes it okay. Ah. Oh, ah. It's Tuesday. You don't have to run on Tuesdays. I know. I promised I'd try harder. You did. So, as a reward, you want to take me to get some stir fry? Ooh, I was thinking barbecue. Yeah, but delicious, healthy Chinese veggies. Ugh. It's my reward, so tough turkey! Oh. Oh, oh, what you got I'm now? Oh, 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 look at this. You come for weak. Oh, oh, oh. Why you go for Nance? Come on. Oh, oh. Okay, okay. What is it? It's you. Why is it all hunched over like that? Because it's out of shape and trying to catch its breath. Nice, thank you. <laughs> I don't think you made him handsome enough. Right. What'd you make? The molecular structure of benzene. Wow. You are officially the biggest geek alive. I am not. Hey, hey! Quit denaturing my benzene! Now it's a snake eating its own tail. Huh. Interesting. You know, uh, the Greeks called this the Euroboros. It's a symbol for eternity. Wow. Yeah. Biggest geek ever. <laughs> you mind if I keep this? Uh, just for a while. That one's going to my book. Book? Mom thinks I should keep the scrapbook. Mom, huh? Yeah. She even got me this camera so that I could take more pictures of us. She can be not too awful once you get to know her. Yeah, that's what I thought. What? I'm really glad you guys are getting along. I didn't say we're getting along. Can you please smile? I don't want to remember you're retarded. Retarded? Excuse me, surely you mean mentally challenged. Whatever. Why didn't you try it? They say it's worse than the disease itself. Ah. I had you as a man who would cling to any last hope. Yeah, I think you might have me right. So why did you forego chemotherapy? By the time they found the melanoma, the cancer had already spread to the surrounding tissue. My lungs, lymph nodes, bloodstream, way beyond chemo. So I have a sudden enthusiasm for exercise. Rock climbing's exhilarating. You should try it. Huh. Climbing a rock only to fall and climb again? I believe that is one of the nine circles of hell. <laughs> Well, I also made a promise to my daughter. To leave a fit corpse. <laughs> Ain't dead yet. Less than a year. That's what he believes, yes? Hmm. There's not much time left. Yeah, I'm aware. Thank you. Maybe next time. I wonder how long it will be this time before you reincarnate. Yeah, well, don't bury me just yet. Have a feeling the doctor might be a little off with his prognosis. Oh? There's this new, uh, treatment I've been experimenting with. Ooh. Susan. Yeah. 
Uh, we're upstairs by the pool table. Yeah. Susan Elliott. Uh, she's my research partner on this new therapy. Actually, her mother Margaret developed the hypothesis about 20 years ago. Thought you should meet her. Well, perhaps you already have. Susan! This is Count Alexander St. Germain. You remember I told you about him. He's the one that wants to publish all my deep, dark secrets. Susan Elliott. Pleasure. Alexander can remember people's souls if he's met them in a previous life. Oh. Yeah, I was King Gilgamesh of ancient Mesopotamia. Well, not bad. Can you remember me? No. No, I can't. Oh, come on. A brilliant classical beauty like this surely has echoed through time. Excuse me, Michael. I must go attend to other matters. Don't trust her. Miss Elliot? Count? Odd guy? Yeah. Do you believe in reincarnation? I'm a scientist. Which means you must be open to all possibilities. Touché. I do believe that he believes in reincarnation and remembering past lives and all that. How do you know he's not bullshitting you? Well, I don't. But he seems harmless so far. Besides, why would he lie to me? I don't know. Perhaps he wants something from you? Yeah. He wants to pay to make me immortal. Huh. Everybody wants something. What do you want? Oh, what every woman wants, I suppose. But right now I'll settle for the reason why you called me over. Oh, right. I, uh, uh, wanted to talk to you about our research. Okay. Have you found a volunteer? No, I haven't really looked for one. Don't bother. Michael, please, don't give up. I, I know it works, believe me. I do believe you. I ingested the first piece about three weeks ago. I've been eating probably two grams a week. I haven't been documenting it properly, I'm sorry. No, that doesn't matter. How are you feeling? Alive. Michael, we have so much to talk about. I know, I know, I know. We need to establish some benchmarks. Probably start with a blood test. To, uh... Do you know what time it is? I've got a doctor's appointment. Oh, now, sorry. I'll tell you what, why don't you stop by the house tonight? Uh, we can talk it all through. Thank you, Michael. Is it in remission? No, the cancer hasn't shrunk. It just isn't spreading any further. Hmm. I mean, don't be disappointed, though. I'm not. See, if your cancer isn't metastatic, then your white cell count is under control, which means your lungs aren't clogging up. See, your blood's not thickening, thus eventually leading to a heart attack. I mean, cancer is a catalyst. It alone won't kill you. Only make me stronger. I think that's a bit of a stretch. But you are looking a lot more healthy. Take it your workout regime has improved? Much. I was hoping Jenny would come with you today. I'd like to congratulate her. Yeah, she's with the ex today. Well, you know it's her insistence upon you taking better care of yourself that probably has you feeling as well as you do. Probably. All right. Are you eating well? Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a look at the original site, shall we? Uh, before you do that, I, I should probably warn you, I've been performing some pilot studies. Like, what is this? Did you do this to yourself? I needed fresh samples for my research. Samples? Doesn't the department provide you with samples? Yeah, 
preserved, diluted cultures with no ties to their source. This, this has life. Yeah, that may be true, but there is no way the IRB would approve such unorthodox methods of gaining samples. You know those review boards are just bureaucratic bullshit. Come on, Ben. Back in the day, what wouldn't you have done to get your hands on some live, fresh tissues for your research? As a colleague, yes, I can see how that could be intriguing. Right? But as your doctor, as your friend, there's no way I could approve of you performing surgery on yourself. I perform outpatient procedures all day long, and I couldn't even imagine doing that to myself. I mean, you got the risk of infection, you have the bleeding risk, not to mention the fact that you could be left with a big, nasty-looking scar. I can live with that. much work done. Three weeks without growth? I've got the immune system of a post-apocalyptic cockroach. <laughs> I'm so happy, Michael. To your health. Hey, to our research. Uh, speaking of research, I found the missing pages to my mother's notebook. Oh. There might be a secondary effect to our treatment. Nothing bad, don't worry. It seems we may have more in common with the immortal Medusa than we originally estimated. It makes perfect sense. If your cells can reproduce indefinitely, they won't just stop the cancer from spreading. They'll stop your body from growing old. Indefinitely? How can you be certain? It's all in there. Your somatic cells will halt the cancer and the aging process as long as you sustain the cycle. You mean... As long as I keep feeding them. For how long? For as long as you want to live. Oh. Hello? Michael, can you talk? No, I can't. Prize, Michael. I knew there was something different. Uh. I really need to take this, sorry. Uh, would you like some more vino? Uh, I think I left the corkscrew in the kitchen. I'll be right back. Where's your bathroom? Uh, straight around the corner. What is all this about, Alexander? We're trying to get some work done. We? Oui. Is she there? Yes. Michael, there is something hidden behind those eyes. You can't trust her. I don't trust you. What are you talking about? She has her mother's eyes. It's called genetics, Alexander. I'm not talking about your science, Michael. I'm talking about what's behind those eyes. She has her soul. Okay, so you think she's the reincarnation of her mother, so what? 
Michael, think about it. How can a mother reincarnate in her daughter if at some point they were both alive at the same time? Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe at birth, one of them... What am I talking about? I don't even believe in this bullshit. The answer must lie with someone in the past. Look, I don't have time for this. Sorry, uh, I'll call you tomorrow. Bye. But when? Maybe. I found it. Oh. I'm gonna be your professor next semester. Let's not waste any time then. Who are you? So when did you start? March 9th, 1985. It was my 29th birthday. Hmm. That would make you... Nobody remembered, though. Would you ever tell anyone? The, your research team? Of course not. And neither will you. What about your research? I mean, this is Fleming discovering penicillin. Think about the benefits to medicine, uh, to humanity. Humanity? Humanity expects us to grow old and die. People would understand. Of course they would. Anyone would do the same if they were in our situation, if they knew that would allow them to continue living. Exactly. Exactly. Everyone would do it. Everyone with cancer. What happens when the people without cancer continue to grow old and die? What happens when they realize there's an entire section of the global populace that doesn't age? You think they could coexist in harmony? Humanity would tear itself apart. This isn't Fleming discovering penicillin. This is Oppenheimer splitting the atom. So what's next? I just go back to my regular life like nothing happened? For now, yes. Until you find your next one. Next one? Another city? Another name? Well, I can't just abandon everything I've worked for. My, my house. It's the only way. But it's not so bad. You can go anywhere in the world. You can be anything you want to be. And I can be there to guide you. But I like it here. I, 
I've been searching for a very long time. For what? For someone who would understand. Someone to share myself with, you know, companionship, love. It's the only motivator more powerful than death. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything yet. Jenny, <laughs> eventually I would have to tell my daughter. What would you say? I don't know, the truth? Michael. Well, for fuck's sake, sooner or later she's gonna realize something's gone wrong when she's getting older and her dad looks like a, like a young, scarred monster. You're not a monster. And neither am I. What am I doing? I... I cannot do this to my daughter. That's why she can never know. You can't be a part of society if society expects you to age and die. I'm not talking about society. I'm talking about my own flesh and blood. I cannot abandon my daughter. So what then? Death? How is that any different? You're going to lose her either way. At least I'm giving you a chance to live, to see her grow up. From a distance. I don't know. All I ask, Michael, is that you at least think it through. Please. Michael, I need to see you right away. I need to talk to you about your research partner. Call me immediately before you see her again. It should be behind the sink. Got it. Don't come in. I don't want to see you naked either. Thank you. Uh-huh. Jesus Christ, Dad. Did you cut an artery or something? Oh, uh, sorry, babe. Did I get some on your necklace? Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, yeah. Just a gush here, you know? Okay. That's it. Put some pants on. I'm coming in to finish. No, 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 no. Thank you. That won't be necessary. Thank you. Are you sure? I can't have you messing up that pretty face of yours. I still have a lot of pictures to take for the scrapbook. Yeah, um, uh, don't worry, baby. I'm almost done. I mean, I don't mind shaving you at all, but it's actually kind of cool. Thanks, baby. Um, some other time, maybe. Uh, just not right now. Okie dokie, hot stuff. Stay classy. Yeah, you too. Love you.
Hey, Tiger, what's up? Okay. What'd you do? She's just having a little trouble adjusting. Adjusting? Do you have your keys, Dad? I left mine inside. Yeah, babe, hold on just a sec. I told her we were going to buy her a new computer for her room, and she freaked out. I need to use the bathroom. Jennifer, I said hold on. How's your book coming along? Ah, uh, I've got, only gotten the advance so far. I, I won't see any more of it until he's done. I wasn't just asking about the money. You're a brilliant man, Michael. And it's important that you leave a legacy behind. Not just for your colleagues, but for those that love you. And once... Once you leave us, all that's left of you is how you're remembered. So I'll swing by next Friday then. Yeah. Yeah, we'd, we'd love to see you. Okay. Bye. Yeah. Hey. Hey. You want to talk about it? Not really. She's only trying to help. No, she isn't. She just wants to pretend like we're best friends now and that everything's cool. I thought the two of you were getting along better. You told me you were going to try. I did. I just can't forgive her. Forgive her for what? For abandoning us? For leaving you for that, that tool? She made your life miserable, remember? And every time I catch myself being happy around her, I feel like I'm saying, it's okay. It's okay that you cheated on dad. It's okay that you broke up our family. It's okay that you abandoned us. Honey, sometimes people leave because they have to. I, it may seem selfish, but they don't have a choice. You're defending her now? No, I just... She had a choice, Dad. She chose to leave us. And I will never forget that. Can you just open the door? You know I'd never do that to you, don't you? Yeah, I know that. No, Jennifer, look at me. I need you to know that I will never abandon you. You mean everything. You are the only thing that matters. I would rather die than live without you. Jeez, then don't talk like that. I know that. Of course I know that. No matter what happens, you're always going to be a part of my life. Eventually. No matter what. Dad. Yeah. I love you. I love you, baby. But I really need to pee. Do you have a minute? Absolutely. Well, I think I get that much, but in your email, you said something about fitness. Isn't it all about the ability to create better offspring so that the species has a better chance of survival? I mean, isn't that the entire point of natural selection? That's right. Well, I mean, that's part of it. Well, so then the genes, the ones that the, the individuals favor, survive through the offspring. Yes. So then the offspring is more important to the species than the original organism. Yes, they are. 
I'm sorry, I, I didn't get your name. Uh, Preston, sir. Preston Wincott. How'd you do on my midterm, Preston? <laughs> I got a D. I think you got a B. No, I, I got a D. I, you even wrote study harder on it. Yeah. I got it right here. No, 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 no. I'm giving you a B. Really? Yeah. Oh my God, thank you. You're working on that paper, though. Yes, sir. Yes, right. sir. Yes, sir. Thank right. you. Thank you so All much, right. Roger. Thank you. Along. I could have sworn I locked that door. Your uh, friend was in there waiting for you. What friend? Uh, old guy, funny shirt. I told him I hadn't seen you in a while. Working late. Yeah. End of the term has really got me swamped. I'm sorry I haven't been in touch. Well, have you thought about what we discussed? Yeah, only every single minute since. I know I've been hard to get a hold of. I really have been busy. Well, do you have time now? Uh, can't talk right now. Gotta go meet with Alexander. Your writer. He's been acting. Well, stranger than usual lately. I think he suspects something. Anyway, uh, I'll call you tonight, I promise. We do need to talk. I think I need to do this alone. I'm coming with you. If he suspects something of you, then it might implicate me. Actually, I think he wants to talk about you. Does the name Ishtar mean anything to you? No. He's convinced it's one of your past lives or some such bullshit. Don't worry, I'll make sure he doesn't mention you in the book. What else does he know? Nothing. Uh, that's all I ever told him. I told him we were research partners. You were there. In fact, I haven't even talked to him since. We can't risk being exposed. At least not until we disappear. Right. Of course. Look, um, just stay here, please. I'll be right back. I promise I'll keep your secret safe. Who are you? It's Michael. Still? I... I got your note. And? Did you accept a gift? What gift? Are you talking about Susan? Oh, don't play games with me, Michael. She's not Susan, nor Margaret, nor any other name she might have used. Margaret? Look, uh, whatever you think you know, about Susan or her mother, you can't tell anyone. When you were first offered immortality, 
Gilgamesh! It was one god, one goddess, who wanted to make you her maid, her partner for eternity. She was the goddess of love and war. Her name was Ishtar. And she has returned once again to offer you the gift of eternal life. This is insane. She's just a woman. And you are a fool. You always have been. This has gone way out of hand. I'm pulling out of the book deal. I will, I'll pay you back your advance. Do you really think I care about a book? Do you have any idea how long I've waited for this opportunity to escape this eternal cycle of growth and decay? How many things I have accomplished in any of my lifetimes only to have death come and wash them away and then to start all over again and again? I can't do it anymore. She's the answer. She can break the cycle. It's not that simple, and there's a price. Ask her to share her gift with me, I beg you. No price is too high for eternal life at the sight of the gods. It is for me. You've rejected her already, haven't you? I intend to, yes. I must act quickly then. I'm sorry, Gilgamesh. I can't let you ruin this again. What are you doing, Alexander? You were never worthy. You'll disappoint her and she will leave this world again for who knows how long. Please, listen to me. Put the knife down. This is all in your head. I will take your place by her side. She will never accept me as long as you live. Is it true, Michael? He would turn me down. Refuse the gift of eternal life. He was a poor choice. He's not worthy of your gift, but I am- Silence! How dare you speak to me like that, you worm. Forgive me. For ages I have waited to find a worthy mortal to sit by my side in eternity. But again I am refused. It will take ages more to complete my search. Goddess, please take me. I am prepared to worship you for eternity. You are an old soul, Worm. You think yourself worthy? Yes, my queen. Very well. On your knees, mortal. Drink the gift of eternal life. <sighs> I can feel it. Oh, my God, it's wonderful. I can feel the years melting away. <sighs> the cycle is broken. All the voices of my past lives are converging, screaming in ecstasy. <gasps> You're right. Susan? Just get me a bandage before I bleed to death. God, sorry, I. You really had me going there. Bandage, right. <laughs> We're just going to leave him there like that? No. You should leave. I can't risk him living. He knows too much. He knows too much. <laughs> Five times of wisdom. And I still thought I could avoid death. What a fool. I should do it. I'm the one that brought him into all this in the first place. <laughs> Have you ever taken a life? It stays with you. <laughs> Besides, this is not her first time. Just go. Are you sure? Please. 
Run along now, Michael. Okay, but just go. This won't be pleasant. May I make one last request? Make it last. Couldn't find you in your office. I remember when I was a student. Going somewhere. Mm. Always in a hurry. Ah, uh, youth. Life is a one way dead end street. I think I'll slow down now. Somehow, from the first moment I saw you, I knew you were the one. But somehow I knew I could never have you. I'm sorry. Don't be. I was being selfish. You were being human. You know, in another life, I probably would have run away with you. It's not too late, you know. Thank you. I got my own little lady. You said it yourself. Love is the only motivator more powerful than death. I must be growing wise in my old age. So, what's next for Susan? Or is it Margaret? No, oh, it's Susan now. I think I'll stay around here for a bit, till I shed my latest skin. I take it you won't be enrolling in the Walbridge Graduate Biology Program? Yeah, that was never the plan. It's a shame. You would have made a pretty good student. Actually, I did learn something this time. I once promised someone I would never take this off. Talked to the school. They agreed as part of my uh, retirement package to waive your tuition as though I were still teaching that. Oh, really? Yeah. You get to go to Wallbridge for free. Um, this is the part where you jump up and down for joy? It's just, I'm not so sure about Wallbridge. I was considering going to state. Walbridge is a better education. I know, but it's full of pretentious shitheads. Language? Your words. Plus, you don't learn everything in the classroom. Hmm. So true. Did I say that? No. I had an original thought. Ooh, sorry. Didn't realize you were such an intellectual sensation. That's perfect. What's perfect? <laughs> the title of your book. Dr. Michael Saigo, An Intellectual Sensation. Oh, that's horrible. Uh, it's brilliant. How about Dr. Michael Saigo, Pretentious Shithead? Language. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should have this. Cool. It's a 
you borrow Uroboros. Well, that's one of two known pronunciations. The Sumerians called it the Uroboros, but then the Greeks came along. Dad, Dad, it's amazing. I love it. Thank you. Don't you lose it. It meant a lot to me. Thank you. I'll never take it off.